How you doing, fam? Man? This is Chris Mizo here. A lot of you have questions about the SSD, especially when it comes to Gen 5, which is understandable. We all know once you go up a generation, it typically gets hotter and hotter, especially for these Gen 5 SSDs. Now, a lot of you are curious about whether you should use your motherboard's heatsink or should you use the SSD heatsink that it comes with? Well, in this video, we're gonna go dig a little bit deeper and figure out which one is for better use. Now, first off, I do have to say, not all motherboards are alike. So if your SSD did come with a heatsink, it might not fit on your motherboard. So you wanna be really careful on what type of SSD that you purchase and what type of heatsink that does come with that SSD. I've been getting a lot of questions on whether to use that heatsink. Now, I currently, I have the ASUS ROG X670E Crosshair Hero, which I installed it in. And a lot of you saw that I installed the stock heatsink. So you're curious whether if that's any good. It does recommend you to install a Gen 5 SSD into the M2 one, which is the very top one, just above your GPU. Instructions are pretty standard. It tells you to make sure to remove any plastics when you do install the thermal pad on top of the SSD. According to ASUS's ROG X670E manual, it says that it is plenty to keep it cool when you do touch the heatsink of a motherboard it typically has a aluminum feeling and it doesn't really have any type of other material besides that even the bottom side i believe is aluminum let's take a look real quick as i got one here which is the asus rog x670e's crosshair hero it is just a standard aluminum heatsink nothing special there is no type of copper obviously there was a thermal pad in there and you do not want to keep a thermal pad once you do remove it. I highly recommend on replacing a thermal pad if you do remove the heatsink on top of whatever you had it installed. Right now we have the stock ASUS X670E Heroes SSD cooler. Right now it is on top of a Gigabyte Aorus Gen 5 10,000 megabyte SSD. Will it be enough to cool off something as hot as a Gen 5 SSD? We are going to do some benchmarks and we're going to do some trials to see if this cooler is enough to cool off this SSD. Now, I do have in my hand the next storage two terabyte drive, which you can win absolutely free in the free giveaway. I'm giving one of these away sponsored by Newegg. And if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you check it down in the description box down below or just go into the card above if you want to join the contest first. Let's go straight into the performance details. We're gonna talk about the idle differences. Now, what I mean by idle, I also mean by web browsing, watching videos, and doing your typical multitasking. With the stock cooler, you're reaching about 39 to 43 degrees Celsius. A to 64 extreme. It had about 44 degrees Celsius, and the highest temperature it reached was about 50 degrees Celsius. Crystal disk mark with the stock cooler reached about an average of 64 degrees Celsius and a height of 70 degrees Celsius. ATTO disk benchmark, it ran up to average use of 75 degrees Celsius all the way up to 77 degrees Celsius. What about real life usage? So what I did was I did a transfer between files through USB 3.1 to the disk drive because those are more realistic numbers and you're looking to use it for more media use and you constantly transfer things, you're transferring about 220 gigabytes. So it transferred probably with relatively quick. I got an average temperature of 68 to 73 degrees with the stock cooler. Gaming wise, it is also interesting because Call of Duty reached an average Temperature of 59 degrees Celsius. Bigger games such as like Cyberpunk 2077, where it was in overdrive mode. Right now we are going to remove that cooler and we will replace it with Gigabyte's cooler that came with the kit. Will that actually cool it off a little bit more than the stock X670E Hero cooler? Well, let's find out. This is the Gigabyte Aorus cooler that it comes with, and this is the stock cooler. They both, both have some decent height, as you can see. 
but as you can tell this is much taller but then again this is also much more wider as you notice that this has much more better heat dissipation from what it looks like on the actual uh, cooler that they give you with gigabyte versus the one that they give you when it comes to asus's x670e's motherboard stock cooler will this actually cool off your gen 5 ssd that's what we just found out but now will this actually do better when it comes to temperatures when it comes to gen 5 ssds well let's put it in and see what kind of numbers we pull to install this you're going to have to remove this whole casing if you ever installed a ssd before in a cooler such as this just make sure to remove all the screws and don't mix up the placement and just be really careful because you can see how tiny these screws are as i'm lifting them you're probably thinking you got to be careful too because you do not want these to fall somewhere where you don't want it to fall so just be careful and cautious when you do install the ssd into this type of cooler this will just pull right now you'll see that there's thermal paste on both sides here but now we're just going to remove it that's the problem here the screw is much longer and deeper which does not allow now you're probably asking can you remove the screw and place it in probably so let's find out so don't give you don't use the one gigabyte gives you that won't give you the correct length you're gonna have to use the one that, that is on the stock asus cooler because you can see how much longer the uh the, the screw is for it now will it properly hold that's a good question we'll find out when you tighten this down i highly suggest don't over tighten it because you don't want to damage this board you just want to tighten it till it's snug let's go straight into the performance details we're going to talk about the idle differences now what i mean by idle i also mean by web browsing watching videos and doing your typical multitasking gigabytes cooler you're reaching about 41 to 45 degrees celsius benchmark wise they weren't ran in the same exact order so they might have slightly different temperatures between the two 80 64 extreme and ran an average of 59 degrees celsius with a high of 63 degrees celsius crystal disc mark and ran about an average of 67 degrees celsius up to 75 degrees celsius and with atto it ran an average of 67 degrees celsius transfer between files through USB 3.1 to the disk drive. You're transferring about 220 gigabytes. So it ran about 65 degrees Celsius all the way up to 70 degrees Celsius. It almost fluctuates down at three degrees cooler immediately on the gigabyte cooler versus the stock cooler. Call of Duty reached an average as it was already high when I went into the game. It was about 65 degrees Celsius it constantly dropped all the way down to about 60 degrees Celsius. If I continued on, more than likely it would get cooler because you're not going to really use that high of transfer speeds. Cyberpunk 2077, where it was in overdrive mode, did that have any effect on the SSD? No, nah, not really. It didn't really have that much of a large effect. The highest I reached was about 62 degrees Celsius on the Gigabyte cooler. And that's the only reason why was because I played the game a little bit longer than Cyberpunk with the stock cooler. It doesn't really make a large difference. If you're using your PC for browsing and for casual usage like Photoshop or you're using it for gaming, you're not going to really notice the difference between the stock cooler and the Gigabyte cooler. It's honestly going to be very similar in performance and a very slight difference. Now where it matters is if you are making games where it's like you're rendering 3D or you're using large file sizes such as Premiere Pro where you're constantly transferring between files and drives, yes, it's going to really matter. And then you can use the Gigabyte cooler if you so choose to. Again, it's not really going to be a large difference. 
to me, the better difference would be getting a better thermal pad. If you have a decent thermal pad, then you'll be fine. Instead of actually modifying a cooler to go onto the motherboard because it doesn't really make that large of a difference. So fam man, guys, I hope you found this video very useful. If you didn't, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is interested in PCs, make sure you share this video with them. And also if not part of the big wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for all the newest updates. Make sure you follow my X handle right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. So fan man, guys, if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask down below. And also, what do you think? Will you feel like you need to install the Gigabyte cooler over the stock cooler, or if you have another SSD that is a Gen 5, will you install their heatsink? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo, signing out.